Well, believe it or not, I have a boat full of girls. Uh, but you might be able to tell it's raining and uh, they're all inside for now. But uh, we're going out on the water and uh, for the next four hours, we're gonna have a good time, hopefully. Hopefully. Sorry guys, no faces. I'm not here to uh, exploit young women. But they made it out. And uh, the rain is calming down, so not too bad. Boat number two. Uh, first charter went really well, except for the rain that you saw. And uh, we're on boat number two, different boat. Uh, this is a bachelorette party, I believe. Uh, I don't know. The last one was a birthday party. This is a bachelorette party. A bunch of girls. Uh, rain's gone. Here we are, it's 8.30pm, uh, trip number three. Uh, just about young kids and uh, going out to watch some fireworks, probably hang out for a little bit in uh, Monroe Harbor and back by 11. It's been a long day already, <laughs> but I feel good, I feel good. So. Oh my god. Day two. So yesterday had three charters. Everything was great. Everything went well. Great day yesterday. Today, I was out on one of the boats that I was out on yesterday, because I was on three different boats yesterday. Yesterday had a little bit of an issue with the anchor on that boat. Uh, and I'm sorry for the sunglasses. It is so bright. The sun is so bright. One of the other captains, when he was reeling the anchor back in, there was an issue and it broke a couple of parts of the windlass. You know, I, I, I dealt with it last night, it was okay, but there was very little wind. But as you can probably hear and notice, there's quite a bit of wind today. In fact, there was a small craft advisory, 20 knot, 25 knot winds. So I took a group out and we went to the playpen in Chicago. If you're not familiar with that, it's where a lot of people anchor out. I hate it. It's stupid. It's a terrible place to anchor. Uh, Monroe Harbor is a much better spot, but everybody wants to go to the playpen because that's what they've heard of. So I take them to the playpen. I anchor, which, which the windlass would do. After I let the anchor out, you know, I like to give it a five minutes are we moving are we not moving and you know the client is basically like are, okay are we good can we swim i'm like hold on guys hold on hold on we i, I need to make sure the anchor is holding because they don't know they have no idea what anchors do or how they work or yeah anchors holding it's great put out the floaty they all like ha only half of them could swim so i'm like okay here's some life jackets 45 minutes later all of a sudden the boat is moving and it's moving fast toward at least a $2 million yacht. I say, hey guys, we got a problem. We got, I gotta move, we gotta take care of this. The problem is the windlass doesn't work so I can't get the, the road, the rope part of the anchor back up. The chain would work, but the rope part wouldn't work. So I have to go onto the bow in a 25 knot headwind and pull the boat with the road to get it back up. Use every muscle in my body to pull this road back in, get the anchor back in, run up, move us forward again, get us to a good spot where I can then drop the anchor, which I was able to do with the windlass, drop the anchor back down. I let out a bunch more road so that we had a, a long ratio, so the, the, the anchor, and there's probably 40 feet of chain on it, figured, okay, we're good. I'm like, guys, you know, g give us a few minutes, let me, let me make sure that everything's good. And then uh, 40 minutes later, all of a sudden, we just start drifting in toward the same boat. Well, the problem is, at this point, 
one of the clients had come up the swim ladder and somehow cut his leg open. Not bad, just on his shin, but it was a bleeder. He didn't even know that he had done it. It was someone else on the boat who had pointed it out to him that his leg was full of blood and there was blood all over the boat. They're like, do you have a first aid kit? I said, yes. <laughs> Here, it's in this cabinet. They're like, no, it's not there. Well, meanwhile, I'm trying to deal with the fact that we're about to hit a $2 million boat. So I'm like, look guys, I'm sorry. Use some paper towels, figure it out. I have to keep us all from hitting this other boat. We'll deal with his injury, which was minor in a little while. Every muscle in my body to pull in 140 feet of road and 40 feet of chain the anchor held well enough for me to pull the boat forward and then I was able to pull the anchor chain up quickly enough get on the helm so I went to another spot where no boats were behind us <laughs> so we still got this crazy wind I'm like I'm gonna go to a spot we still have another half an hour before we need to leave where we are I'm gonna go to another spot and I'm gonna anchor there. And if we start to slip, I'm not gonna hit another boat. They're like, fine, you know. But everyone is like, why, why do we keep moving? Why can't we anchor? What's the issue? So I go and I anchor and it, the anchor holds, everything's good. So then we're there for 20 minutes or something like that. And there's another boat, little boat with like 16 people on it. Little 26 foot Sea Ray bow rider with 16 people on it. And they decide they want to anchor like right in front of us. Well, they couldn't figure it out. So they start drifting toward us, drifting toward us, drifting toward us. So I run down onto the bow. And now the captain is running that boat right over our anchor road. I say, take it out of gear. And I stick my feet off of the bow pulpit on the boat that I'm on to keep that boat from hitting the boat that I'm on. I push him off, I push him back, and I say, reverse, reverse, reverse. Once I can see that his props are clear of our anchor road. So he reverses almost touched the side as he came around but thankfully he was able to control it and in the meantime you can look at this video of this guy who had no idea what he was doing and he ends up on the rocks and we had another boat that was also a big boat who was in distress and couldn't get their anchor to set and was in the no-go zone but it was a very stressful day and I definitely, definitely got a workout <laughs> trying to pull this anchor up three times. Twice when we were slipping, and then at the end of the day, I had to pull it up. At the end of the day, at least I was able to put the engines forward a little bit, get most of the line to slacken so that I could pull it up pretty quickly. So I had to shove it down in a hole that's about that big at the same time as trying to pull it up and pull the boat forward. The good thing is once I got the chain, I was able to wrap the chain around the windlass and then I could use the windlass. There are controls right on the front. I was able to use the windlass to pull the boat up, but I never want to use the windlass to pull the boat against the wind. So I would pull the chain, get a little slack, pull it up pull the chain, get a little slack, pull it up, pull the chain. My rate for today sounded great at a hundred bucks an hour. I earned, <laughs> I earned that money today. And you know what? The customer was happy. At the end of the day, they gave me a nice tip and they understood and they asked for my card. They, they want to do more charters. So I think that I overcame the difficulties today. Yeah, we had a little minor boo-boo. It's fine. Nobody got seriously injured. And we made it back to the dock. Thank you guys for watching this episode. I, I hope you learned a little bit about 
what it takes to be a captain. I'm gonna do some more of these coming up too. So, uh, you know, lots of stories. I definitely, uh, definitely had a good time yesterday. And, uh, you know, today was just one of those tough days, but they're gonna be good and bad. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.